Thank you for auditing Professor Sky's Record Review, the only first listen new music review show hosted by a French professor who will be doing his second ever bilingual video. I'm going to be reviewing the album Mas Canciones de la Onda by Juan Walters. Y si quiere escuchar la parte en español, avanzate a la 16 minutos 30 you speak segundos. Spanish, you might know that the Spanish I was speaking was terrible and almost garbledy gook. This is an ill-advised idea, but I think it's fun. I mean, I'm a French professor. I don't really speak Spanish, but I think it's important that as music fans, as lovers of culture, we break out of this mentality that we have. Now, if you go on Bandcamp and look up Juan Wouters, he is listed as being world music. Now, first of all, this is a problem because he's based in New York. <laughs> he's a New Yorker. He moved from Uruguay, Montevideo, to uh, Queens, New York in 2002, according to his Bandcamp biography. But still, he's classified as world music. Now, what in the hell does world music mean? Can we take a second to talk about this category of music? Now, on the one hand, it's, it's great, right? I mean, it's great that anybody listens to anything that is not made by white English speakers. But it is kind of a weird imperialistic thing. It's not kind of a weird imperialistic thing. It is definitely not a weird imperialistic thing. It is definitely just straight up an imperialistic statement about culture. If you are not from, a, a Frank, from, not from an Anglophone country and you sing in English, poof, you're not world music anymore. Daft Punk isn't world music because they sing in English. It's about linguistic and cultural imperialism. That's what the world music category means. So that when some guy from Queens sings in Spanish about his experiences traveling in South America, all of a sudden that is othered. It is turned into world music. Here you go, the rest of the world. You can have this little tiny corner up here. Meanwhile, Americans and Brits and Canadians who all sing in English, they get to have their, the rest. 99% American English culture, 1% the rest. So I'm gonna be spending more time with world music, especially with music that is not in English. I reviewed a French techno group yesterday, that went pretty well. So today I'm gonna to be reviewing kind of the opposite. It's not techno at all. I don't think there's a single computer used in this album. Now I have reviewed Juan Wouters before. I reviewed his album Introducing Juan Wouters, and it's funny because he released two albums last year. I didn't review the first one. Would you like to guess why I didn't even listen to it? I'll give you a second to think about it. Yeah, it's because it was in Spanish. I was like, yeah, I don't speak Spanish. I don't want to listen to some Spanish dude singing about Spanish stuff. I get it. Blah, 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 corazón. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. That imperialism is very hard to shake. So when he had an album that was in English and in Spanish, and it was very clear that it was about his life in, in Queens and his life in two different cultures, and he sung a lot in English, and he had this charming voice and this great guitar work, all of a sudden I could listen to it. So when he came out with a new album, even though it's only 12 minutes long, this video is probably gonna be longer than the album, I wanted to give it the seriousness that it deserves. Because introducing Juan, uh, introducing Juan Pablo is a great, great album. If you haven't heard it, I'll, I'll put the link up to my video up there. Uh, it's an amazing album. And what I really felt from that album is that I really cared for this person. I really cared for his life. He has this way of singing this soft, intimate, vulnerable voice that's also quite strong with good range and capable of expressing an amazing amount of emotion. For the most part, the musical palette is very, very restrained. I mean, guitar, maybe one other instrument, and just his voice. And it's just absolutely beautiful. So I love that album, and this album is very much in that same vein. It turns out, this is like the B-sides to the album that I didn't review last year because it was in Spanish. That's why it's called Mas Canciones de la Onda, more songs from the wave. So what he did was he traveled, right? He traveled across South America. He's from Uruguay, right? He speaks Spanish, but he hadn't been back to his home continent in a very long time. So he went back and recorded an album. And the thing is, is that, you know, it's, it's my job. I'm a professor, right? So I spend all day, every day, helping, mentoring, teaching young people. 
This is going to sound patronizing, but I don't want it to. <laughs> but I can't help it. Listening to his music, I realized the reason that I care about him is he's the kind of young person that I love to see. Like, he travels, he learns, he makes art, he makes music, and he's like out there, and he's living this life of a young person, but he's not wasting his youth on, on drugs or alcohol or partying or, or kind of emptiness. He's spending his youth in a way that I can relate to and I think of as being like this great way. So this kind of travel log that he's doing makes me feel like, like I know him or that he's one of my students and he's telling me, oh, I had this awesome time and I went to Mexico and I played some songs with this dude and he had an accordion and I was all playing and you know, like it's, it's this very, very intimate experience listening to this music and it's really quite excellent. It's another thing I will say about world music, and it's what I say whenever I talk about people about reading French literature. It's like, did you know that the world's greatest literature has been hidden from you? That there's a giant rock, and that rock is English, and it's just BAM! Right on top? And Shakespeare, that's it. That's the only thing in English literature that compares to the majority of French literature. But BAM! Right on top, and you can't get any of that underneath. None of that great French literature. It's all hidden from you by language, by culture, by English dominance and all that. You don't get to read Balzac. No. You don't get to read Rabelais. You probably don't even know who Rabelais is. That's hidden from you. And that's what happens to music as well. Juan Wouters and this world category makes it hidden from you. So if you give yourself the time and, and, and space to not know what you're listening to, and all of a sudden that rock is lifted and you're free. You're free to actually live in the whole world. So I'm simultaneously condemning the world category while also encouraging people to spend more time in it. Because that's how you know, we build connections and understand people, to so understand their culture, understanding their language. Woo! I haven't even started talking about the album yet, really. Um, as far as the, the lyrics, I will say I don't really speak Spanish as you will see if you stay tuned to my Spanish section of this video. But I understand it. I've studied it, a f I don't know. I took a class with this crazy Peruvian lady uh, who used, it was like an adult education class and she would come into our classes Saturday morning very clearly having not slept the night before. She was in some kind of open relationship and she was making a documentary about how open marriages work. But then like halfway through the semester, she became insanely depressed and was drunk all the time. And it turns out it's because the open marriage didn't work and she felt betrayed. The fact that I knew all of that meant that she maybe was a more interesting character than an effective teacher. But that's basically it. You know, like I've had some exposure and when you learn French, you can learn Spanish fairly easily. But what I get from this music and what you can get is the gist, is the idea. Think about the way that this dominant English music Music in English dominates the world. And think about how the majority of the world processes this. The majority of the world has studied some English. They might understand the title in a couple words. Love, fire, you. But ultimately, it just becomes a sort of atmosphere, a sort of feeling. Each song is able to communicate some kind of feeling. And they don't need to know all the words in order to appreciate it. Americans, Anglophones, have robbed themselves of that. You know what, we got Gangnam Style, we got all K-pop, so that's good. That's out there, that does that for us. Uh, every once in a while a Spanish song will, will make it through a little bit. But in general, we don't like that feeling of not knowing what we're hearing and understand, you know, we want to understand every word. Well, I can tell you from my brief experience listening to this album, you just don't need it. The simplicity of the songwriting is one of his greatest strengths and truly this feeling that you are on some kind of journey with him. It starts off, and first of all, I wanna thank Bandcamp because their description, they describe every song. So it's very useful to me because like, you know, I read Sentime uh, Sentimento Volador and I thought that meant sentimental journey, but it actually means a flying feeling. So, you know, it's good to have these things described. But it begins and it starts off with this instrument called a band, band, bandonian. It's like an accordion, but it's not. And this is a traditional instrument from tango. 
And so part of the idea is that you're along with this guy, Juan Wouters, as he's traveling around South America, listening to different music styles, you know, almost like an ethnologue, I guess, and bringing those styles in and making music like that, not aping it, right? He's not being like, and here's a tango song, and here's a, no. It's, it's he's making his music, but just with these little influences coming in. And he sort of describes himself and talks about himself and introduces his friend. And this whole album is like him with like one or two other friends, people that he meets along his way. Again, it's this beautiful feeling that you have, like you're just, you're just traveling with Juan and he's making a song for you. Mi guitarra is the second song. It means in Mexico. I mean, it was recorded in Mexico. It means my guitar. Um, but interestingly, I don't think it's a, a guitar that's being played on here. It's a bajo sexto, which is like, like a guitar, but it's traditionally a Mexican instrument. <laughs> And this is song, this song's interesting. Uh, I could pretty much figure out most of the lyrics here. Um, but the, it's all about someone who really wants a guitar. And this made me think of a song by Sœur Sourire, the French nun, the singing nun. Beautiful, I might do a whole video about her someday. She's an amazing, amazing artist with an amazing story, by the way. A singing nun who got excommunicated and died with her wife of like, pill overdose. <laughs> Very interesting woman. But anyways, it reminds me of a song that the singing nun sings about finding a guitar. And this is something so like the singing nun, if you've ever heard her, it's just her singing with a guitar. There's just this great intimacy that's created between you and the artist. And this like aspiration of buying a guitar, of having some way of expressing yourself. It's a beautiful theme. And I don't think it's expressed enough in music. The desire to make art. Passar la bien, my favorite track on the album by far. I love this track. I've listened to it like five, six, seven times. Like, I cannot get enough of it. It's this amazingly soft melody. Matter of fact, I'm going to play it for you for 14 seconds now. Con mi cielo me voy a otro lugar. Sigo con la ilusión que vuelve. There, I hope, is what I heard, which is just this really beautiful vibraphone melody in his singing. And it's, I believe it just means like having fun, pasar la bien. And just the, the rolled R's and the, the sweet melody. And if you hear this and you like that at all, really give this musician a shot. G give his albums in English, his albums in Spanish. He's doing something really special here and we just can't let the language get in the way. Also, the word corazón, like, I, I think, so it used to be a joke I had. I used to listen to a lot of uh, Spanish language radio stations in, in LA. And it used to be that like every single song has the word corazón in it. And I think this is important. I think it's important because it means heart. And I think that the language, the Spanish language itself informs the music and the art. That it's not that like, oh, Spaniards and Spanish speaking people are so romantic. I think it's actually the fact that the word for heart is such an amazing word that rhymes with so many things. You know, like fire and desire rhyme in English in a way that's really important. Like those words have to always go together. If you want to make fun of music in English, you'd just be like fire, desire, desire, fire, fire, desire, funny, money, money, funny, funny, money, money, funny. The word corazón is such a beautiful word that I think it actually partly informs music in Spanish. Because of its heart, <clears throat> heart, my heart. What a stupid word. Or in French, <laughs> okay. These words are terrible. Corazón, what a word. So anyways, that's in there somewhere. So that makes me happy. Uh, muy Muy Chico, I can't figure out if this is a song about being very short or being very childish. Because I know Chico can mean both. But at some point he talks about being mas alto. So it might be just about being short and being someone who's, you know, jealous of someone who's taller. I don't know. I don't need to know. Because the song is just a beautiful song with a great guitar and great melody. Then it ends with Montevideo, uh, 22 de Diciembre. Uh, 2017, as my students do. Whenever I ask them to read a date, they just they just say that part in English because it's so hard. So this band camp uh, uh, biography tells me that it's about him on his birthday 
in his original town of birth, Montevideo. And he's walking around, and it's about him walking with a friend and discovering some music. Like just discovering some, I'm reading this from my notes here, candombe music. It just comes out of nowhere in the middle of this song. And it's about walking around the city, and it's about feeling comfortable, about the joys of walking and exploring a new city. It's great. Again, this isn't music that makes me feel young, but it's music that connects me with the best part of the freedom of youth. The freedom of youth isn't the freedom to like lose brain cells and just like go hard. The freedom of youth is being able to be in Montevideo a couple days before Christmas and walking around and discovering some new music. This also had some of the best Spanish that I was able to understand. Fuimos caminando juntos. We were walking together. <laughs> My hovercraft is filled with eels. Uh, but still, it's it very nice. And it's exactly the great example of what I'm talking about. The way the rest of the world must listen to music in English. Where you're just able to pick out a few things here or there. So there you go. There's Professor Sky's long speech about imperialism and music. Uh, and now, oh, damn it, the air conditioning just went on. I'm sorry for my Spanish listeners, but you are going to have to hear it with uh, a little bit uh, a little bit worse audio. Okay, I'm nervous about the Spanish part. Uh, here we go. No puedo hacer uh, este video en español. No es posible para mí. Soy profesor de francés, no soy profesor de español. He aprendido poquito de español de una peruana loca a San Francisco. Eh, uh, de la Radio Romántica a Los Angeles. Escucha radioromántica.com Pero quiero hablar algunos minutos en español. ¿Por qué? Porque Juan Walter canta en español y en inglés. Y no entiendo todos de la música. Entiendo algunas palabras, sí, pero me gusta mucho esta música Y soy contento que no entendió todos, porque yo puedo vivir la experiencia de todo el mundo que escuchan la, la música en inglés y que entender algunas palabras. Por ejemplo, la canción excelente Montevideo, uh, 22 de diciembre de 2017. Entonces, puedo entender, fuimos caminando juntos a la ciudad. Por eso, entiendo todo. We were walking together in the city. Y cuando uh, puedo entender eso, para mí, creer a... a, a oh, ça c'est espagnol, ça c'est le francés. Hola. <laughs> Merde. Uh, chinga. Es muy difícil hablar español y francés. Right? Pero cuando puedo entender algo, uh, algo como eso, uh, uh, quiero aprender más. Y es muy importante para gente que quieren aprender más lenguas de escuchar más música que no es en inglés. Ok. Pienso que Todo uh, con, uh, 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 se dice uh, world music es un ejemplo de imperialismo lingüística. E existe realmente imperialismo lingüístico que es un problema, un grande problema. Entonces, soy muy contento que Juan Walters uh, challenges me a aprender más español y no es alguien que canta la world music es la música ok es la es la ocho veces que hace esta parte del video es muy difícil soy perfeccionista pero me gusta mucho uh, Juan Walters. Entonces, para uh, mi perro, Toby, es, uh, es el aniversario de mi, de mi, de, de mi perro. Y uh, 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 así 
aquí está la cámara.